Near Automata. It is a game you might or might not have heard of. It is one of my favorite games of all time and it makes you question the existence of life just to show you some booba and asa at the end anyway. It's so it has one of the best movement system and combat system I have ever played, but most importantly, the absolute best soundtrack in existence of video game history. And of course, most importantly, recently, the new Automata got its anime adaptation currently being aired right now. The point is, the game was just so good that I just wanted to play it again and again, so I decided to learn how to speedrun it. But how does one even go about learning a speedrun? Where do you even get started? How do you learn the strategy used to speedrun the game? Well, that was the exact same question I have for the longest time, and so I decided to make this video to kind of document my journey of how I learned the Nier Automata speedrun to hopefully help other people out as well. At the end of this, I was able to beat the game under 2 hours and submit my first run onto speedrun.com, putting me at 132 place of all the runner in the world. And just for reference, currently the world record at first place is about an hour 20, so there's still a long way to go. But anyway, let's get started. This is how I learned the near automata speedrun, 80%. Speedrunning, as the name implies, is to try to beat a game as fast as possible, with the most popular category being any percent for majority of the game, which means you just have to beat the game any how you want. The most important part when it comes to learning a speedrun is to do the research and figure out if you actually want to speedrun the game. When you're doing a speedrun of a game, you're going to be playing it over and over and over and over, so it's very important to make sure that you actually like the game, and most importantly, like playing the game. Speedrun come in all kind of shapes and form, and in general people like to run all kind of different games. But the most important aspect to note here is that just because you like playing a game for what it is, doesn't mean you enjoy the speedrun aspect about it. Minecraft speedrun is relatively dependent on RNG, which means you might have to grind a lot of times before you get a good run. The Ocarina Time speedrun just have you hold a pod and kind of run around with it, which apparently override the game memory space to teleport you to the ending title, so it has nothing to do with actually playing the game itself. Then you get things like clue speedrun where you just click a bunch of buttons and hope you get it right, and if you don't then just try again I guess. Genshin Impact, which is the main game that I play on this channel, still for some reason does not have a skip button, so it would be a terrible game to try to play it again and again because you're just going to be sifting through cutscene and dialogue the entire time. The thing that introduced me to Nier Automata speedrun was this Nier Automata any% speedrun done by Half Coronated during the SGDQ event in 2017. In case you're not aware, GDQ stands for Game Sun Quick, which is generally an event filled with speedrunners trying to complete a bunch of games as fast as possible with the intention of raising money for charity. These runs are super amazing and entertaining to watch because not only other runners are super talented, but in general they're going to commentate on what is happening on the screen which give you a general really good idea of how the run is done or what is happening in the run. You also get a really good idea of approximately how long a run is generally going to take and for Nia Tomlin that is about 2 hours, which to be honest I think is a perfect amount of time to run since it isn't too short but isn't too long that you have to commit so long into it. Nobody really like losing a run after like 6-7 hours which just feels frustrating. During the runner downtime such as they're just transversing to the map, they are also going to read out donation that they got which helped fill the gap a lot. Okay so real quick. We have a donation from the source of my entire wardrobe, the Yeti, $10,000. <laughs> Watching this run here gave me a general really good idea of what I can expect from the run itself, such as the fact that the combat is mostly done through something called a DG or a damage glitch. In Near Automata, for some reason, if you put a short sword on the heavy slot and you do a dash heavy attack, you will magically do a lot more damage, and by spamming this method, you can effectively melt most of the bosses in the game. And so that's how the entire combat is done in the entire speedrun. Or how movement in the run is generally done by inputting a series of attack or combo that help you get to area that normally you are not supposed to get to. So coming in, we have what's called a bridge skip, and essentially, 
by doing a series of combo or attack that give us enough height, we can actually climb all the way to the top of the bridge and skip over this entire section where we normally would go that way. Now this trick is right tricky to do because you have to get the timing really correct and at first it took me a long time to actually figure this out. The way you do it is through a jump, heavy, light attack, heavy attack, light attack, heavy attack and a plunge which gets you on top and then can jump over. Watching the run done by Half Coronated definitely gave me a very very good exposure to what I can expect in the run. And as you can imagine, all of these aspects are things that you normally don't encounter in a normal playthrough since either you don't know about the technology or you just normally wouldn't think about it like that. Watching the entire run not only gave me much more confidence that I would enjoy speedrunning the game, but it also allowed me to get a head start by start picking up some of the tech that they were using in the run to kind of learn and understand what is going on. Of course, there come a point where you actually sit down and decide that you do want to run this game. And most importantly, you sit down and start learning about each and every tech. You start practicing them, start learning how to actually perform them, and start learning how the game is actually routed. There is this 12 minute YouTube video called Near Atoma that's a speedrun basic made by Ami that basically go over all the basic tech done in a Near Atoma speedrun as well as how they are performed it, such as what is a lift, what is a double lift, and how to do some high jump combo. And these are things that you can actually start learning and practicing before you learn how the run is being routed. It is really interesting because these are small things that you can actually start learning and start practicing just by heading into the game normally. You don't have to learn how to do the speedrun in order to learn the tech. And it's really interesting by learning just the tech because not only does this give you a really solid foundation, but it also helps you start feeling that pride and accomplishment that you get by doing tricks, even if you're not doing it at the right spot. The most important thing I learned throughout my journey is not the run itself, but the fact that you should really take things slow, one step at a time, so that you can feel accomplished at each step. Just go into the game and perform one very simple thing, and once you learn it, once you learn the trick, you'll feel accomplished, and it helped motivate you to keep finishing the rest of the run. And with that, I went to the nearautomatasbrun.com website, I head to Guy, and I clicked on one of the A ending Guy website. Now this brought me to a Google document that titled 80% Guy with most of the basic information here. But the most important aspect is that it has a link to a full commentator tutorial done by Chusigo Chan, which is 5 hours long. This video was extremely helpful in terms of teaching me how to do and where to go, and I pretty much just followed this video side by side to get an idea of where I'm supposed to be going and where I'm supposed to be heading, and of course what to do as well. In fact, I actually learned the majority of the run on my flight by downloading this video on my phone and then playing it on my Steam Deck on my flight. To be honest, it was rather straightforward when you just follow a tutorial. The most important thing is that you don't have to learn all the complex strategy right away. You can just do the most basic strategy at the beginning. There are many, many beginner friendly strategy and you can slowly learn the more complex strategy. For example, the jump on the screen is honestly rather complex and I didn't learn it until like I actually start running the game. The most important thing that I found is definitely to break the run or the learning process into multiple parts and just learn one part at a time. The absolute biggest thing that helped me learn a speedrun was to break it into section. Um, specifically for Nier Automata, I broke it by bosses. So starting from the desert region to Adam would be one section, and then the Amelusium part would be one section. And you just simply learn one section at a time from start to finish without worrying about anything else. You don't have to learn the entire game before you start running. It's definitely the most important aspect when it comes to learning. You can just run it section by section, maybe even from the beginning of the game to a certain selective section that you learned, such as from the beginning to Adam, or from the beginning to, say, A2. I probably ran the prologue itself for like 20 to 30 times before I start moving on to the rest of the game. The prologue itself is rather straightforward. It involved a few tricks, but most of them are pretty much high jump with like one or two outbound clips. It gives you a really good starting and ending point to practice, which really help you build a foundation. And I realized that learning the rest of the game was significantly easier since a lot of them just involve similar tricks like either high jump, long jump, or some clip here and there with like a pot launch. 
Once you finish with one section, even with just the most basic strategy, then move on to the next, and then move on to the next, and you quickly realize you're at the end of the game already. You can learn about the more advanced strategy and slowly improve your time later on. I think the first time I ran this game, I was looking at something like two and a half hour, and now I cut it down to two hour and eventually an hour and 40 ish with a lot of room for improvements still, which I'll slowly learn and practice, but um, at the very least, being able to just complete the game is already really satisfying. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. So that was the journey of how I learned it near Automata speedrunning. Which is really cool, and you can catch me potentially running this game once in a while live either on my Twitch or maybe I'll stream it live on YouTube is what I was figuring out. So thanks for watching guys, uh, kinda just wanted to share my journey a little bit. Speaking of which, I also actually recently started playing Final Fantasy XIV online, so um, if you don't see me uploading video then uh, that'll be the reason why. I'm a pretty big fan of RPG in general, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys would like either near more near Automata content or maybe like other content like Final Fantasies, something that's outside of Genshin Impact. I think it'll be cool. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. So thanks for watching. Bye.